Hi, I'm Duncan. And I'm Kel. As you might have guessed, we're not showcasing a finished passive house today. Instead, we're sharing an owner's experience of building a passive house using the off-site prefabricated method. We're speaking to you today from the land of the Gundagurra people. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. We're currently building our passive house in the southern tablelands of New South Wales, about halfway between Sydney and Canberra. While we have some pretty amazing views, we are off grid for water, sewer and internet. We also have a pretty unreliable supply of electricity, so we have solar, a battery and a backup generator. Being rural, we had concerns about how easy it would be to get tradespeople with sustainable house knowledge and experience here. So it made sense to go with a building method where a lot of the work actually happened off site. We also wanted to build something special to maximise the views we enjoy from just about every angle of our building pad, which is why we chose to work with Gaia Architects and Eclipse Passive House. We started building in earnest in March of this year, and as you can see, we had some site access challenges to overcome. We needed to do a fair bit of work in proving the access roads to the site as they were not maintained by council, and our driveway is over 500 metres long. We also had to extend our services, including power, drinking water, internet and firefighting water over 100 metres to the new site, which required one hell of a trench. Eclipse's construction method is a little unusual around here. For a start, there's a lot of weekenders, meaning a lot of our neighbours live in steel sheds on concrete slabs, whereas Eclipse Passive House uses a lightweight frame on a steel and concrete foundation. Our house's frame and panels were built off-site in Eclipse's high-tech factory in Sydney. The team uses specialist passive house techniques and machinery to ensure precision. They even have lasers. They then pack it up for shipping to site. Our flat packed house arrived on site on a big truck in June, just like a massive IKEA click and collect. It was left for the team to unpack and assemble the following week. Over the first six days, the floors, External and internal walls and roof panels were installed by the team with the help of a large crane. More than 50 panels were craned in one by one and fixed into place by the team. All of the floors were finished in the first day. Looks like a bit of a cold and foggy start to day two. I hope those clouds clear up quickly. Yep, gone. We're building in quite a windy location and there were a few tricky moments to manage but everything went smoothly in the end. The panels themselves are an interesting design with a large cavity for the cellulose insulation and air and watertight wrapping on either side. Battens are then added to the outside to fix the cladding to and on the inside to provide space for the services including electrical, water and ducting before being closed with plasterboard. The finished panels are up to 400 millimetres thick. Man, those guys work fast. You may have noticed the hand warming campfire in our earlier video. It does get very cold here. Our panel installation happened across some of the coldest days we experienced this past winter, with the team enjoying a few minus five degree starts and a maximum daily temperature around six. The wind chill made it much worse and even the Kiwis in the crew were wearing long pants. For some extra fun, we threw in a lot of frost and even a bonus snowstorm. Oi, back to work you lot. Another weather challenge during the install was rain midway through. While the team enjoyed the chilly but sunny days through most of the install, a big dump of rain was forecast just before the last of the roof panels were fully installed. To protect the interior, the team craned in the largest tarps we've ever seen, much to the amusement of our neighbours on the hill watching our progress with, through the binoculars. They must have thought we were glamping. While each individual panel is airtight, the team needed to spend time toward the end of the installation phase taping every join inside and out of the house. We also made things extra challenging with our complex design evolving three interconnected pavilions. We've built a house before using conventional methods and I guess what's really stood out for us 
building this time is the care and precision involved in building a passive house, where everything has to line up perfectly for air tightness. While this attention to detail certainly adds to the cost of the build, we're expecting it will more than pay off when we're living in a much more comfortable house that's cheaper to run. By day 10 of the installation, the framing was complete and the house was airtight, but there was still a heap of conventional work to complete inside with plasterboard, tiling, joinery and painting. And of course, we still need to clad the exterior. We're in a bushfire zone, rated Bell 19 on two sides and Bell 29 on the others. If you've never heard of bell ratings, good luck, you must live in a safer place than us. As we had a bushfire through the back of our property when we first moved here, we take the bushfire construction rules seriously and made the decision to up-spec as much as possible. The exterior will be clad in ironstone colour bond with gaps no larger than 3mm which is rated to bell 40. The bell 19 ends of the house will feature some bushfire resistant Australian hardwood cladding rated to bell 29. We're also intending to use a BAL40 rated composite product for the decking. We're building to achieve passive house certification with blower door testing planned at the end of the build. However, Eclipse also conducts a test once the house is airtight. The idea being it's much easier to find and fix any leaks before the cladding goes on. As you can see, the house passed the test, coming in at 0.34 air changes per hour. We're also feeling pretty confident our house will enable us to live comfortably year round as this temperature reading shows. On the day this reading was taken inside the house, it was four degrees outside and 15 in our current house with the fire going. At the same time, it was this comfortable 19 in the unfinished passive house. Thanks for the opportunity to share our progress with you. As we hope you'll agree, Sue Connor from Gaia Architects has designed a beautiful house that sits perfectly and comfortably on our site. There are certainly simpler designs available for passive houses, but we're also delighted that we'll achieve this design and passive house certification efficiently thanks to the system developed by Darren Parkinson at Eclipse Passive House. Like every homeowner featured on Grand Designs, we expect to be in by Christmas. Hey, at least we got the windows ordered.